We went 2-0 and in Game 1 of the WNBA Finals between the Minnesota Lynx and the Liberty uh, with the Lynx plus 6 and the over 159. I got a, another 4% play on the side again uh, for this weekend, but I will break down the total in this video here. I am Ronald Kabang from wagertalk.com and themoneyballer.com. I'm the number one overall handicapper at WagerTalk since September 1st. My all-access clients are up on um, 59.42 units on a 85, 48, and 4 record. That's a 64% hit rate, uh, meaning $100 betters are up nearly $6,000 between the Premier League, MLB, uh, WNBA, NFL, and college football since September 1st alone. Uh, also, I'm uh, the number one WNBA handicapper this season, uh, last season, and all time at Wager Talk, currently on a 43 22. 43 and 22 run, uh, including eight and one on 4% plays. Also number two at Wager Talk this NFL regular season, hitting nearly 66% of my NFL plays, already up 15 units through six weeks here, uh, through five weeks, sorry. Uh, and, um, you know, I say these things because uh, I mentioned earlier, I actually have a package up for a side on this game for a uh, 4% play, but I also have a 5% NFL package available for Sunday as well. And my 5% plays are pretty rare. I only have 12 of them so far this year. Uh, and I'm 10 and two on the season or on the year on 5% plays. Also at uh, number one at Wager Talk for 5% spread wagers since 2022. Um, 20, 29 and nine record on those 5% spread wagers. 76.3% uh, hit rate since 2022. So uh, make sure you check out my capper page and see what's available there, wt.buzz backslash rc. You can see that scrolling on the bottom down there. Premium picks and packages are available as well as several free plays that I already have up uh, and available on the page as well. Also at Wager Talk, uh, one day all access pass, you can get it for $39 or a seven day all access pass for $99 or a 30-day all-access pass for $299, which is less than $10 per day. But Wager Talk it has a new offer up and available. You can get 60 days for a reduced price of $398, which equates to $6.63 per day. So make sure you head over to wagertalk.com and take advantage of that incredible deal, whether it's with me or any of the other Wager Talk handicappers on the site. Um, yeah, let's now... Dive into this matchup between the Lynx and the Liberty. Game one, that was an instant classic. Uh, the Lynx showed some serious resilience there in the fourth quarter. They were down double digits. McBride, Williams, and Coyer led the charge uh, late in that fourth quarter, got them back, just chipped away at the lead, and they really capitalized on the Liberty's inability to close out that fourth quarter. I don't, I don't think they – I think they only scored like two or four points in the last five minutes at least – of that fourth quarter. Uh, Jones for the Liberty, Jonquil Jones, she was an absolute beast for the Liberty in game one. Um, but we got inefficient shooting from both Brianna Stewart and Sabrina Ionescu. And that, that really hurt the Liberty there. Stewart, uh, Stewie, she shot six for 21 from the field. Uh, Sabrina, she shot uh, eight for 26 from the field. Uh, and the other thing, what the one of the more interesting things out of, the, um, out of that game one is, the Liberty lost this game while shooting 19 more shot attempts than the Lynx. Um, you know, that's that's really tough to do. That means, you know, two things. The the Lynx shot very efficiently, and then the Liberty did not. That's basically what it's saying. Um, and, you know, with, with that many more shot attempts still not being able to get it done, uh, that was really tough, especially after leading 32 to 19 after that first quarter. Uh, like I said, the Lynx just chipped away at the lead, and, and they got themselves in position. Uh, to put them into OT and get the win eventually. But uh, yeah, heading into game two, you got to remember this Liberty Liberty team, they're one of the top defenses in the league, and I expect them to bounce back on the defensive side of the ball and be more focused here in game two. You know, what I talked about in game one, one of the, in my breakdown was that we're going to feel each other up. And that's the reason why, um, you know, I really kind of put that over in there because this is what only the second time with the Lynx new roster, uh, you know, they picked up, you know, um, uh, Misha Hans-Allen. Uh, the rotation's a little bit different. So this is only the second time uh, that they saw that uh, Lynx team for the Liberty. They kind of felt, uh, did the feel-out process and, um, you know, the over ended up coming through for us. But, you know, historically, uh, they've been great at limiting opponents shooting uh, effective field goal percentage. And in game two, they should at least 
uh, be able to keep the Lynx under 50% shooting from the field. The Lynx shot 51% in game one. And also the Lynx were also a top tier defense during the regular season. And in the latter part of the fourth quarter in OT, you saw why. Um, they were led by Nafisa Coyer. Uh, definitely proved she's deserved that Defensive Player of the Year award. She had, what, three, six, three steals, six blocks, number of contested shots, very key in the last part of the, the fourth quarter. Obviously, you know, she got that foul called and the, in the end where um, uh, Stewie could have actually won that game, but she missed the second free throw, ended up going OT. But overall, defensively, Coyer was a beast. Um, and another thing that was kind of super clear to me in game one is that the Liberty, no matter what, uh, will have the edge on the boards, particularly in the offensive side, offensive rebounds. That's going to be a huge factor for them moving forward. If they get another plus 19 on the field goal attempts, there's no way that I see them losing. Um, but we'll see what happens there. But I think with them kind of controlling the paint, um, that should slow down the pace a little bit as well because uh, during the regular season, I, I think I mentioned it earlier, but during the regular season, both teams were in bottom four as far as pace goes. And you know, limiting opponents' uh, ability, uh, scoring opportunities with offensive rebounding is huge for an under type game, which I think is where um, I would go with this game two here. In game one, um, I mentioned both teams, like I said earlier, we're going to feel each other out. Now we include the whole fatigue factor with the game going into OT. And um, from a trend perspective, teams coming off OT in the playoffs, 15 and 6 to the under since 2011. Um, and then also Liberty this season, 8 and 2 to the under following a loss. They make those types of adjustments. The Lynx are actually 1 and 1 uh, on the season as far as totals go uh, following OT. But the only reason that one game went over was because they went into OT again uh, in regulation. They would have stayed under. Um, you know, so to wrap this up, you know, I think adjustments uh, are going to be made, especially on the defensive side of the ball. I think based on the two, um, these two teams, defensive minded teams, slower paced teams, uh, the under should be the way to go here. The potential game flow, the trends point in that direction as well. Um, I don't think we'll see another high scoring game maybe for the rest of the series. We'll see what happens. But uh, to me, I think the best way to go in game two, um, outside of the the side that I have available on Wager Talk, is the under, 162.5. Uh, all right, so that's the, that's the uh, video for today. Like I mentioned earlier, make sure to um, head over to wagertalk.com, see what's available with all the deals happening there. Uh, check out my page, wt.buzz backslash rc. You'll see that scrolling on the bottom through the whole video. Um, and make sure you guys hit that like and subscribe button uh, if you enjoyed the breakdown. Also drop a comment with your thoughts on the series as well. Do you agree with the underplay here or do you see it going another way? I'd love to hear uh, what you guys have to uh, say about this game. Um, and also, you know, uh, the moneyballer.com. I mentioned that earlier that I'm part of that uh, group there. They have all the stats, trends, and insights you need to make informed betting decisions. So, uh, if you want to check that out, uh, you can use promo code RC50 to get 50% off your first billing cycle at themoneyballer.com. It's my main source for handicapping. I believe it should be yours too. Um, that's the end of the video, guys. Whether you fade or follow, it is on you to make that call. Good luck with all your action. Till next time, peace.